You are listening to Dr. Ron's Words of Wisdom, words on leadership, goal setting, productivity, and a whole lot more. I trust you'll consider this like a vitamin and supplement for your mind and heart. And wherever you receive podcasts from, would you please subscribe to Dr. Ron's Words of Wisdom and leave a rating and a brief written review? It will be so helpful and will enable others who haven't yet discovered this podcast. Today, I want to discuss the subject of kicking fear to the curb or overcoming fear. Right now, I'm recording this during one of the most anxious times in recent memory for the entire world, my country, and I'm sure yours as well. The anxiety comes from the fact is we don't know how it's going to turn out, nor how are we going to get through it, and what are we going to do. Even everyone, from the youngest to the oldest, are feeling fearful, isolated, anxious, nervous, and at times like this, If there's a need for anything, there's a need for solid leadership. And you who are listening today have been elected. You are the women and men who need to give solid leadership in such an uncertain time. All of your life, you have been preparing for this moment. And I want to ask you that question. Are you prepared? Are you getting prepared? Are you doing the things intellectually, physically, emotionally, and maybe more importantly, spiritually, to get yourself prepared? What are you afraid about today? Well, where do we begin? There are a lot of things to be be fair to, uh, fearful of. Right now, uh, leaders have usual kinds of fears that they have to work through and overcome. You know, the fear of being criticized. But even in the anxious day that you're living in right at present, some people are paralyzed by the fear that whatever I do or I don't do, I will be criticized by others. Can we just take a time out right here and assess something to give us a little dose of reality? Oftentimes, we fail to do things or we don't do them well or we never even begin because we are so afraid of what others think of us and what others are going to say and how others are going to criticize and say how we could have done more or less or better sooner or later. And here's the reality I want to give you. Even those of us in leadership, right now, our people are not really thinking about us a whole lot. They have enough on their own plates. They have their own issues that they are trying to get through and navigate that they're really not thinking of you. It is our own egos that make us think that everyone is focused on us and everyone is focused on what we think, what we say, what we're doing. And the reality is they really, really aren't. Here's a little truism that I state to myself and to others whenever I can. And that is, you are going to be criticized whether you do something or whether you do nothing. You're going to be criticized whether you do the right thing or the wrong thing. So I would rather be criticized for making an attempt to do something. I would rather go on record right now saying, if you want to criticize me for trying to do the right thing, even if it doesn't turn out uh, correctly or the way I imagined or intended, it's still okay Doing nothing, being paralyzed into inactivity is not an option. And if I'm going to be criticized, I'd rather be criticized for trying to make a difference. The other thing is, uh, at times people have this uh, uh, innate fear and an unrealistic fear in many ways of failing. Discouragement and failure are two of the surest stepping stones to success, said Dale Carnegie. Discouragement and failure are two of the surest stepping stones to success. So if you're discouraged and you have failed, you are standing in a long line of women and men who have gone before you and have made a significant difference in the lives of many and their world. Uh, It was Thomas Edison who many people believe was one of the most creative geniuses of his era, and perhaps many eras. And he basically said, I failed my way to success. 
In other words, long before I discovered the, what I was looking for, I discovered ways that didn't work. Right now, we are in an interesting time. No one knows for sure what will work. So, gang, let's just jump in, give it the best educated guess, pray over it, and do something and move ahead. And if it doesn't work, we can turn on a dime and we can go another direction. Let's be like Thomas Edison and say, um, yes, before I finally found success, I found a lot of ways in which it wouldn't work. Most of the people that you'll know and you'll ever meet have attained their greatest success just one step beyond their greatest failure. That's a quote from Napoleon Hill. And that is, when you have uh, failed at something, it could very well mean, and I'm not sure that we innately think this, that that could be a sign that we're right on the verge of a breakthrough. We are right on the verge of accomplishment. Right now, don't push past your fears of failures and criticism. And some people right now are just frightened of the future. They believe that if the future is going to be like the things we are experiencing today, and even worse, I'm not sure that I can face it or that I am not uh, that I am equipped to, to do that. Well, we don't know what the future holds. I don't, you don't, nor does anyone else who's walking around today with a microphone in front of their mouth, mouth trying to tell you what the future is going to be like. They do not know. But one thing about it is to get to the future, we have to get through today. So right now, my leadership friend, you need to exercise the best leadership this hour, this day. This is all that we have. And if tomorrow becomes tomorrow, then that'll be our future self. But right now, we don't need you to be the best leader in the future. We need you to be the best leader you can be right now today. Right now, there are many organizations that are having to make some painful, difficult, hard decisions. And that grips a leader's heart with fear and can grip your mind the same way. Unfortunately, we are in a, not only a health crisis, there's an economic crisis pending, and there are difficult decisions. When you become a leader, your decisions that you're going to make not only affect yourself, they affect other people, their families, and their futures. And I know that there are going to be some very, very hard decisions that may in fact have to be made and more than likely will need to be made. I'm going to pray for you that you'll have the right mindset, the right heart, but you were called, you and I are in the positions we're in, not just to make easy decisions. 90% of people in the world could make the easy decisions. You and I are where we are for the 10% of difficult decisions that have to be made. That's what it means to be a leader. We have to pull up our socks, get with the program, and make those decisions and know that it could indeed cost people pain. There's just some folks right now feeling highly anxious about the responsibility that comes in the positions that they may hold or even as leading their families and, and other things of that nature, that the responsibility just seems overwhelming. I would just say to you, take a step back, relax, meditate, pray, and breathe. Yes, you have great responsibility, but nearly everyone in the world right now is facing unbelievable responsibilities. There's one thing that happens to all people when they're trying to make change and do good and, and, and to step up and to be better, and that is the fear that people will figure it out that I'm an imposter. I really shouldn't be doing this. I really shouldn't be uh, be a leader right now. You're not an imposter, my friend. You are an on purpose, and you are exactly where you are for such a time as this. You have been preparing, and you have been equipped. One of the things that I would say to you is just know that you are today where you need to be. One of the things that we critically need from our leaders in, in these fearful times and a way that will help us to kick fear to the curb is it is our job as a leader right now to define reality. Now, we don't have the total grip on all that is uh, reality, but we, we do understand what reality is for our family, for our church, for our not-for-profit, for our business, for our organization, for our side hustle. And 
our thinking is not what's going to overcome fear. We're not going to think warm, pleasant thoughts, and somehow that's going to dispel all of our fears. Thinking doesn't overcome fear. Action does. And so even in the midst of where things look a lot different today than they looked three or four weeks ago, take some positive action. Take it for yourself, for your family, for your workplace. Take some positive action today. Do something that moves you along. That may be something as simple as exercise, eating correctly, spending time praying, spending time reading, spend some time checking in with people who you know are lonely and discouraged and offer a word of encouragement. But a part of that defining reality is, yes, things are bad, but we're going to get through it. We're going to get through it together. And here's what I believe is going to happen. There will come a point in the future when we will look back on these early months in the year 2020, and we'll be able to say this. If we made it through that, we can certainly make it through the problem we're facing today. It may even be a good exercise for you right now to just reflect back on your own life. Think of some really challenging times and difficult situations in your own life that you made it through. And the same God who gave you grace and strength to get through them will bring you through what you are facing right now. You can do Feel the fear. Courage isn't the absence of fear. It's feeling the fear and doing it anyway. Taking the action anyway. It's not denial of fear or that there are a certain class of people who are just fearless. I'm not sure there's anyone who's actually in reality fearless. They feel the fear, understand it, appreciate it, but keep moving past it and pushing through it. And uh, that's what will make uh, the difference today. In the midst of all of this, while we're trying to overcome the fear and kicking it to the curb, make sure you stick with your routines. Do one thing every day that scares you, said Eleanor Roosevelt. I would say right now, because everything has been so thrown off, our schedules, our lifestyles, our our businesses, everything is, you may have to develop a new routine, but I would advise you, um, we're not on vacation, even though it's downtime, we still need to find some routines that give our life meaning and texture and color and importance and keep moving through them. Do that, do something today that will make a difference Uh, Again, thinking will not overcome your fear. It is action that will help you to overcome your fear. (coughs) So I say develop a routine. I want to say this one as the last one. Focus on something positive. And you'll say, Dr. Ron, everything in the world seems to be coming apart at the seams. What's there to be positive about? You still have a family that loves you. At present, you still have a roof over your head. You still have some resources You still have your ingenuity. We are going to get through this. And as I said, we're going to look back somewhere in life and we're going to say, you know, I was there and I lived through it and I was able to get through it. And therefore, I know I can I can get through it. If you have to get online and find some positive thoughts or go to podcasts or blog articles or books, I would say turn the television off. It's filled with negativity right now. Fill your mind and your heart with positive thoughts. I love a quote that Babe Ruth, the baseball great, said, never let the fear of striking out keep you from playing the game. Yes, a lot of things can go wrong and may very well go wrong, but don't give in to that and allow it to force you to the sidelines that you will not participate. If we do a few of these things, my friends, I believe for your family, for yourself, for your community, for your church, for your business, we can help kick fear to the curb and overcome it. You've been listening to Dr. Ron's words of wisdom, words on leadership, goal setting, and productivity, and a lot more. I hope today this has been like a vitamin or a supplement for your mind and heart. And again, wherever you receive podcasts, if you would subscribe to Dr. Ron's words of wisdom, leave a rating and a brief written review. It will be so helpful. My leadership friend, you were created for such an hour as we are living in right now. And I want you to know, and I believe this from the bottom of my heart, 
You are doing better than you think you are. You really are. And until next time, this is Dr. Ron saying have a great and blessed day.